Okay, so we're going to be looking at something that Git allows us to do that is absolutely amazing. So what we're going to do quickly here is we're going to open up a new GitHub repository. So we're going to open up to Chrome here. And I know I showed you this in the other video, but it's always good to, you know, keep, keep, on, keep on seeing. So we're going to be opening GitHub if it decides to load. There it is. I don't know what happened there. But we're going to make a new repository. Remember to do this right here. So we're going to hit this new repository and then we're going to name it. And I'm just going to do test. Always initialize. We're going to create the repo. And the repo is made. And we're going to clone it. Remember, you should always make an SSH key. It'll uh, help your workflow out a lot. So go ahead and we're going to copy this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open up the terminal. So here's the terminal. And we'll go ahead and make this a little bigger so that we make sure that we can see that you can see what I'm doing. So once again we're going to do a git clone. Paste in the github ssh key that they give us. We're going to clone that and now this is on our desktop. So you see test right there. All waiting for us. So now what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to test. So now we are in there and we can go ahead and open this quickly. So here's test right here and there's the read, read me. And what we're going to do quickly here is don't worry about that. That's just uh, jargon. But yeah. So what we're going to do here is we're going to quickly make some files. And remember I showed you how to do that. So we're going to do touch and we're going to do index HTML and we're going to do uh, test one and test two and then bam you can see that they've already made it right there and then we're just going to add and so now we have made this and now we now if we hit our git status you can see that these files are untracked and you can obviously quickly go over to your GitHub account, test, and you noticed right there that there is none of those files we made, right? Because they're only saved on our local machine. So we need to get these up here quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and minimize this. And we're going to do a git add because we want to stage these for, uh, for the commit. And if we hit Git status again, we can see that they're ready to go. So we're going to git commit dash m made made files. And then we're going to do a git push and then what that's going to do is it's going to push it up to the repo and if we once again go up to our repo and reload There they are right there. There's the files that we made. Now, I'm gonna teach you something that's incredibly power, powerful that's called branching. Now, if you go over here to this button right here and click right here, it's gonna show you a timeline of all the commits that you made. So this is the initial one, this is when it was created. And then we go over here and this is where we made the file. What I did right here is kind of taboo. You don't really do that. What you do is you never really manipulate the master, which is this black line right here. The master, if you go back to here, see you're on branch master. This is the master branch. You really don't want to touch that or work with that. You only want to update that by updating branches. And I'll show you what that means. So GitHub, or not just GitHub, but Git allows you to do two things extremely well to have version control so you can always revert back to a previous version of your code and the biggest thing that changes our world is 
collaboratory coding. Um, so basically, if you go back to this file that we had here, say that you had two programmers, one worked on test one and the other one worked on test two. Instead of you just working on both of these, you can get the same repo because they're public and you could go on your local machine and then you could make your changes and then push them up to GitHub and then all your changes are saved in one spot. So it really allows quick workflow for two people to work on the same code. And that is incredibly powerful. Just a quick FYI, um, never, you never want to have two people working on the same file. That's why you make two different files like we see here. So say for example, we had programmer one that's going to work on test one and we're programmer one. And programmer two is somewhere else on his local machine and he git cloned it to his and now he's doing changes to this. So if we go ahead and open this. I don't know why this is going so slow. Okay, it opens up to my text editor here. And obviously you see that it's empty because obviously we haven't done anything with it. Whoops, wrong click. So what we wanna do is once again, we don't wanna work on this file because this is master. We don't wanna do that. And what we wanna work on is we wanna work on what's called a branch. And a branch allows us to do changes to the code without actually without actually doing that. I'm actually going to open with Sublime so it's a little easier to see. So we're going to open test and we're going to open the whole folder. There we go. And then I'm going to shut down this code right here. This is another project of mine with my friend Ali and Leon. And, uh, one, and so we were using GitHub right there to collaboratively work together. Um, so I'm going to open this, make this large so we can see this. So we don't want to work on master. Right now we're on master. And there's a great command called git branch. And git branch will expose all the, whoops, hit it wrong. Hit it wrong again. Oh man, okay, git branch. Okay, so as you can see, there's only one branch and it's called master. Mine is gonna be green. Uh, it might be different on your machine, but it's always gonna have this asterisk here. So what we wanna do is we wanna switch to another branch. So what we're gonna do is git branch and then the name of whatever we wanna call our branch. So we're gonna say start test one. So now if we run git branch again, you can see now we have two things in here. This is the master branch and this is start test one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch over to the other one. So we're gonna check out, once again, there's tab completion. So we're gonna test out there and now we have switched back. So now if we run the branch, see how we've switched? So right now we're gonna add some code. We're gonna do var, This is the right file, right? Let me make sure I'm in the right file. Close without saving. Yeah, I didn't open it. Okay, there we go. I was wondering why I didn't change colors. Var hello equals hello world. So now this is stored on our local machine and it's not in our repo and it's also not available to our coder too. So say we've done all our changes and what we can do is we can do is do a git add like we normally would. Then we can get a git status to see what's going on. We see that we've modified it and everything's good and we're ready to go. So we're gonna git commit these changes. And then inside here, you know, you just say a little message. I'm just gonna say hello world for time. And now we've done that. So now what I'm gonna do is check out back to the master branch run git branch so we I can show you where so we've switched back from start to master now look what happens when I click this right here see it goes away it's completely gone because on master branch that did not exist this is only stored on this branch and so we're not manipulating master at all 
So if we wanted these changes there what, in the master, what we need to do is a git push. And now just doing that, if we did a git push, it's going to say everything up to date. See, because the master, bra master branch is up to date. So what we're going to do is git origin. This is a new command, git origin, and the name of the branch. So what we're saying is git push, and we want the origin of start. So we're going to hit that. Now look at that. This has been pushed up to GitHub. It's not on our local machine yet, and I'll show you that in a second. So we're going to tab over to test. There's our branch right there that we made. We're going to compare and do a pull request. So basically the code says, hey, some new code has come in. Do you want to merge this with the master? So what we're doing is, do you want to merge start into master? And that's what we want to do. And here's your changes that you've made. And we want to do that. So we're going to create a pull request. We're, it's going to check if it's able to merge. We'll go on to that later what that means. But if it's green, you're ready to go. And we're going to confirm the merge. So right now we have merged this branch into our code. So if you go over to test one, you can see that it's here. So that's very exciting. And once again, if you hit this button, you can see that change. Let's reload it one more time. Sometimes it takes a while to catch up. There it is. So we've come off the master branch. We've, this is where we've done the commit. And now we have said, go ahead and merge this into master. So now our repo is ready to go. But if you hit this button, you see this. There's no nothing in test one. So what we need to do is called a git pull. And this is saying, hey, I want you to pull down all the changes that have been made into the repo. So if we hit this, look at that. It's going to say, look, this one's been changed and one line has been added, one insert and one file change. If you hit this, bam, it's there. So it's been made. So this is a very powerful way to do version control, collaboratively work. And now programmer two, let's say that he was dependent on test one. So now this is in the repo, programmer two could go back to master and then pull these changes. So once again, it's a very powerful way to do that. And now if you type, whoop, wrong place to type. If you type in git branch, you see that that branch is still existing. And if we wanted to, we can always go back there and start working off it again. It's totally up to your preference. But let's say hypothetically we've done what we wanted to do. We're, we're completely done. So we, merge, we go back to master. So we're back to master. And what we want to do is we want to delete it. Git, and then you do git branch flag, and then D, and then the name of the branch. So there, right again, it says, hey, we've deleted it. And if you go back, there's only one branch. Now, that doesn't affect us. Um, if you did not save these changes and pushed them up, there, there's going to be a message saying, like, hey, you have unsaved changes here. Are you sure you want to delete it? Just like if you were to make changes here and close it, it's going to give you that message. Hey, are you sure you want to uh, close this before saving? So it's doing the exact same thing that it's doing right here. So you don't really need to be worried about that. I like to not have so many branches open at the same time. I like to work on one branch and finish that branch, delete it. And sometimes, you know, depending on the project, you could have multiple branches open or only one branch open. I prefer to have only one branch open, but that's preference. So this is what's called branching and it's incredibly powerful and it really helps you use and utilize code better. All right, see you later.